Hello and welcome to our course in international criminal law. My name is Douglas Gilfoyle and I'm delighted to be able to introduce the series of units you'll be going through in this course. International criminal law is a fascinating area of study for a number of reasons. First, it obviously, in its very name, deals with the intersection between concepts of criminal law, largely drawn from national legal systems, and international law. So to be able to study this subject successfully, we have to introduce both concepts drawn from criminal law, uh, concepts such as mens rea and actus reus, the mental and physical elements of an offence, concepts of participation in a crime, but also international law concepts such as the foundational principles of treaty law and customary international law. More than that though, international criminal law has complexities that derive from international law itself, in that international criminal law in addition has a relationship with ideas such as human rights law and the law of armed conflict. Now those different bodies of law can pull in different directions. Criminal law tends to favour or have a number of protective rules designed to preserve the interests of a defendant against the power of the prosecuting authorities and the state. So we can see that many of the protections in criminal law are, as it were, defendant focused. However, if we look at the tradition of international humanitarian law, the law that applies in armed conflict to protect civilians, and human rights law, these tend to be victim focused bodies of law. So one of the questions that international criminal law has to deal with is how to reconcile those different bodies of law. And indeed, how in a criminal law context do you apply rules that were perhaps originally designed in the context of, for example, war crimes, more as sound operating principles in the battlefield rather than necessarily things to be adjudicated in a court of law. So it's a wide course as well in the sense that we won't just be studying narrowly the questions of uh, the key international law crimes, though we certainly will be looking in quite some detail at crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide and aggression. Uh, but we'll also be looking at the institutional context in which such crimes are prosecuted. So we have a large unit on courts and tribunals and we'll be putting, the f putting those developments or areas of study in a broader framework. So we'll consider how these ideas relate to um, the foundation, foundational concepts of international law and international criminal law. And we'll also be looking at certain matters relating to defendants and suspects questions of how you get someone before an international criminal tribunal and what their fair trial and appeal rights may be once they're in those settings. So let's turn then briefly to uh, an outline of what we'll be studying in this course. So here we have the famous image of Justice Jackson, the chief prosecutor at the Nuremberg tribunals opening those proceedings, a famous and dramatic moment that we now see as being perhaps the beginning of international criminal law as we would now recognise it. So in this context, what are we going to look at? Well, module A sets the general scene. Uh, we look at concepts such as um, customary international law and treaty law and how those have helped in the development of international law. But we also remind ourselves about basic principles of state jurisdiction and prosecution because if international criminal law is to be truly successful, most such cases will have to be heard at a national level. And to the extent that there are international courts and tribunals such as the International Criminal Court, they exercise in effect a kind of delegated authority from national jurisdictions. So we need to understand what the limits of those national powers are before they are delegated to international tribunals. Uh, in module B, we'll take a deeper look at international criminal courts and tribunals, um, their uh, history, their jurisdiction, um, and how states um, cooperate with them or perhaps not. 
Module C will be the core international criminal crimes, those that are generally found within the jurisdiction of international criminal tribunals. So we'll be looking at, uh, as I've said, questions of war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide and aggression, but also ideas about the elements of international crimes. How do these crimes uh, fit together? What has to be proven to make out a case? Um, and finally, in Module D, we'll look at some of the general principles of international criminal law, in particular matters relating to uh, the defendant and the running of uh, a defence, or whether we can even get defendants before international criminal tribunals. So we'll be looking at questions such as um, fair trial rights and revision of sentences, uh, and questions involving uh, the immunities, potentially, of people suspected of international crimes, insofar as international crimes are often committed by agents of state, there will be questions about whether they can be tried for what were potentially official acts, and how the progressive developments of international criminal law and a trend towards increasing accountability interact with a law with 19th century and deeper roots that was designed to preserve diplomatic relations between states. So it's a wide-ranging and, I hope, interesting course, and uh, I'm delighted that you'll be taking it.